There are some areas of maths that I just enjoy more than others and sketching graphs is definitely one of those areas. To this point you will know about linear functions. Linear functions, straight line graphs, take the form x is some function of x to the power of 1 or just x by itself. We know that these functions can have a maximum of one root, they can only cross the x-axis at one location. We also know that as x gets very very large, if x tends to infinity, then the y value will also tend to infinity. As x continues to infinity this way, my y value continues to get very large at my graph this way. Likewise, if x tends to negative infinity, y will tend to negative infinity also. We know if we move our x value very far down here, I'm going to get a very large negative y value. This might be something that you haven't seen previously, but we'll come on to it more in detail later on. Quadratic graphs. Now, quadratic graphs can have a maximum of two roots. That would look much nicer. And they can have two roots because their general function is of the form x squared. Now here if I'm to perform the same analysis, if x tends to a very large positive number, then y will tend to a very large positive number. Now if I take x tending to a very large negative number, we know that when we multiply a negative by a negative, we will end up with a positive. So y will also tend towards a very large positive value, which is why I end up with this nice symmetry. What happens for cubic functions? Well, cubic functions are of the form x cubed. That tells us that we could have a maximum of three roots. Let's do some analysis about what happens at the tail ends. Now, as x gets very large and positive, y will get very large and positive. Now, what happens if I cube a negative number? Well, actually, it remains negative. So if x becomes, if x tends towards negative infinity, y will also tend towards negative infinity. How do I use this information? Well, initially, if x gets very large and positive, y will be very large and positive. So I know my graph is somewhere up here. If x is very large and negative, y will also be very large and negative, telling me that my graph is somewhere here. Now I have a dot to dot, and I can simply join the points together and end up with a cubic function. Quartic functions are the next one up. So we would then be looking at graphs of the form x to the power of 4. Again, performing the same sort of analysis. As x gets very large, y will also get very large. As x gets very large and negative, in a similar way to my other even function, x squared, the y value will still be positive. So what should this look like? Well. I know I'm going to get positive values at either end. I can have a maximum this time of four roots and it's just a case of joining the dots together. So here I have a quartic function. After quartic we could talk about quintic functions. They would again be odd. It would be an odd power that I'd be dealing with here. So they would have a similar form to our cubic equation above and so on and so on and so on. So these are our general forms of cubic functions. This is a cubic. It doesn't look like a wobbly cubic. That's because it's got a repeated root here. The root is at 0 three times over. And that actually becomes a point of inflection. So wherever we have something raised to the power 3, it will give us this point of inflection, which tells me that I start above the graph and finish below. Here, I have a negative x cubed graph. Again, we should know this basic form. And again, I've got a point of inflection because I've got this repeated root three times at zero. So how do we sketch these things? Well, the easiest way to sketch a cubic graph is when you can see the roots clearly. So from this, I can ascertain my roots are going to be at x is equal to minus 1, at x is equal to 2, and at x is equal to 4. So immediately, I can draw out my x-axis and think, right, let's think of setting this out nicely. So there's the point 2, there's the point 4, keeping these things roughly in scale, there's my point negative 1. If I were to expand this, x multiplied by x multiplied by x would give me a x-cubed graph, which is a positive x-cubed graph. So I know that the general shape that I would be looking for would be the first graph that I've got here. So it should be taking some shape 
like this. The final piece of information I can get is from the constant that term that I would get at the end by multiplying 1 by negative 2 which would give me negative 2 and then multiplying that by negative 4 which would give me positive 8. So the intercept is going to go through here at positive 8. Well I know it starts somewhere down here, I know it finishes somewhere up here and now it's just a case of joining my points together. So here I have my graph that goes up through the point 8 down through the point 2, up through the point 4, and that is my cubic graph sketched. In this case, I go through the same process. I'm actually looking at a cubic function here, and I know that because I'm going to multiply x by x twice. Another way of thinking of this would be to think of it as 3 minus x, x plus 3, and x plus 3. How do I draw this? Well, the roots this time are going to be at x equals 3 and there's going to be a repeated root at x equals minus 3. Also, if I multiply out my x's, this time minus x times by x times by x is going to give me negative x cubed, which is a negative cubic graph, so it should look something like this. Let's start drawing it. So I know I'm going to go through the point here at 3, I know I'm going to go through the point here at minus 3. Let's think about the intercept. 3 times 3 times 3 would give me positive 27, so I know that I've got an intercept up here at 27. I know it's a negative cubic graph, so I should be starting in this quadrant and finishing in this quadrant. And how do I draw that? Well we said here that the root at negative 3 is a repeated root. Now because that's a repeated root it means that I've actually got a turning point at 3. Now I can bring this information together from start to turning point through 27 through 3 and then down to finish my graph. Further analysis would then be able to tell me whether the maximum value lied on the first quadrant or the second quadrant but for the time being we're not going to concern ourselves with that information. Let's move on now and look at quartic graphs. So quartic graphs generally take this form. And again here we have a root that has been repeated four times at the point zero. And this is what our negative quartic graph will look like. So how are we sketching this one? Again, it's really nice and straightforward when we can see what the roots are. If I pull out then, roots are at x equals minus three, x equals minus one, x equals 1 and x equals 2. Now I can draw my graph in and think right here's my point at 1, here's my point at 2, those are roots, I've got a point here at minus 1 and I've got a point here at minus 3. Thinking about what type of function it is, x multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by x, that's going to give me x to the power of 4, moreover that's a positive x to the power of 4 so it should be taking some form like so. I could then go to look at the intercept, so the intercept would be 3 multiplied by 1, which is 3, multiplied by negative 1, which is negative 3, multiplied by negative 2, which is positive 6. So the intercept should be up here at positive 6. I know that I'm starting from this point and I'm finishing at this point. I need to go through all of my roots, go through the point 6, and now it's just a case of sketching it out. So I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm here and there's my quartic graph sketched. In this case I am again dealing with a quartic graph and I know that because I've got this value here which is going to be squared so we might choose to write this out as follows x plus 3 x plus 3 so there's no mistaking that I've got this repeated root at x plus 3 so where are my roots? My roots are going to be at x equals 2 x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 3. Now this becomes a repeated root and we know from before that a repeated root is either going to be a little maximum above the line or a little minimum below the line. If I expanded the x's I would have here a negative x to the power of 4 graph. So that would have this general shape. Now it's just a case of bringing all of that information together. So my roots are here at negative 3 here at negative 1, here at positive 2, 
uh, I haven't yet found the intercept which would be 3 times 3 which is 9 times 1 which is 9 times 2 which is 18 so that gives me the point here I know that I'm starting from this point I know that I'm finishing from this point because it's a negative x to the power of 4 graph and the final piece of information that I need to use is the fact that the root at minus 3 is repeated now if I'm attacking this from below it means that my turning is going to be below the axis so what does this graph look like well this time I'm going to come up down up down and complete and there I have another quartic graph in this case I'm dealing with yet another quartic graph this time I've got a cubed root so it's repeated three times and we know that this gives us a point of inflection now a point of inflection just like on our cubic graphs is going to slide straight through the axis so how do we draw this well we can think of this as x plus 3 x minus 2 x minus 2 x minus 2 the roots would be at x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 2 would be sorry x is equal to positive 2 would be our repeated root three times over that would be where our point of inflection was it's a positive x uh, x quartic x to the power of 4 graph so we know that the general function is going to look something like this and that's enough information to get me started so I've got a root here at negative 3 I've got the point of inflection here at 2 I know that I'm starting from this point I'm finishing at this point I can also work out the intercept negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8 times 3 is going to be negative 24 so the intercept is going to be somewhere at negative 24 and we finally have this point of inflection now the point of inflection is the last one that I've reached so it's going to slide through my axis like so and it is important that we put this kink in it now I'm ready to draw my function so I'm coming down through my point of inflection up through my root at 3 and then that finishes my graph my final advice would be to use the links in the description below to have a look at some GeoGebra files that I've created so that you can play around with these functions and understand them a bit more